Good morning and welcome to the Kent County Apportionment Commission. Um, my name is Lisa Postumus Lyons. I am the Kent County Clerk and Register of Deeds and by virtue of my office and as provided for in state statute, I will um, be convening this meeting and, um, and chairing it until such time as we elect a permanent chair. And that is the first order of business. Um, I would open the floor for nominations to elect a permanent chair. I'll make a motion that we elect uh, uh, Chris Becker as our chair. Okay. Um, Treasurer McGregor moves to elect Prosecutor Becker as permanent chair. I'll Is there supported by Mr. Verhulen. Any discussion? Seeing none, I will call the roll. All those, in, this is just um, any action taken by this uh, body requires a majority vote um, that is provided for in statute. Uh, all those in favor of C Prosecutor Chris Becker as our permanent chair, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. Congratulations, <laughs> Mr. Prosecutor. All right, wow. How Thank about you. we trade seats? <laughs> well, I get to move over? <laughs> That means we have to move our nameplates too. Yep. Okay. So when you talk, push this push button. The button. Yep. Okay, I guess the next thing on the agenda would be election of a secretary. Um, we'll take a motion to nominate the secretary. I will make the motion to uh, for uh, Lisa Lyons to be secretary. Do I have a second for that? Support. We have a support by Mr. Verhulen. Uh, any discussion on that? Okay, we'll take a vote. All those in favor of uh, Ms. Lyons being the secretary? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And it looks like the motion carries. So we have a secretary. Um, next thing on the agenda would be <laughs> discussion of process and timeline. I think uh, I think we have this letter here from Warren Norcross. I guess I'll let you get into that and then sure. talk about you have a little bit better idea on the timeline and what's going on. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I um, I took the liberty of kind of putting together some information. This is the information that. Um, that I thought would be helpful for us in this first meeting, just to discuss um, the process and, and uh, the potential timeline here. Uh, as, as you can see, the first thing that we have is the statute, which um, governs our, our direction here. Um, and so I wanted to make sure everybody on this commission has a copy of this um, for their reference. Also, um, I provided a, it's been an interesting uh, last few weeks. I know uh, there was questions as to whether or not we'd been provided um, the census data. Uh, in mid-August, the Bureau of Elections had sent out a notice that it's their opinion, um, it's their opinion that 60-day um, statutory, I guess, shot clock, we could call it, by which we have to, this body has to adopt a map would begin September 30th. However, um, the County Clerks Association expressed some concerns with that given um, that on August 12th, there was um, the publication and release of census data by, um, by the federal government, which um, going back to statute, that's really what kicks off the, the shot clock. Um, and so I wanted to provide this legal opinion to you. I, um, it's obviously this is an association I, I belong to um, and uh, an attorney that I th think does a good job and I take that very, very seriously. And so it would be, um, it'd be my recommendation that we adhere to this legal opinion because frankly, I don't think it hurts anything if, if it turns out that this isn't correct. But as I read it, it makes perfect sense. And I wanted you guys to have it as well. 
Um, so that would move our, uh, and I, I know several counties are also doing the same, that would move our 60-day time limit to um, October 12. Um, so with that, I mean, I don't, I don't know if there's anything you, any comments or questions, Mr. Chair, that you would want to take from other members or if um, there's that. But I did take the liberty of working back from that date, um, uh, proposed meeting schedule. I didn't put any times because I thought it would be important for this body to maybe discuss that together. Um, but this is this just will allow um, this will just allow for time to uh, have any commission member who is interested to uh, submit a map to this body. Um, I figured again, looking back to what the past precedent has been in this body. Um, they have accepted uh, pro map proposals, apportionment map proposals from um, commissioners who sit on this board. So I figured um, any member of this board who would like to submit a map for consideration by this body would have time to do so under, under this proposed schedule. And then we would still allow for um, time for the public hearings and, and so forth. But this is just based on my research and the information I had at hand. Well, and past precedent. Yep, I appreciate that. And I guess let's just stick with right now in terms of looking at this opinion. That would leave us with an October 12th deadline. I guess let's open that up for questions or discussion. Uh, just specifically on that point in terms of October 12th, if we have time, any questions about this opinion, I'll uh, open it up to anybody who, regarding that issue. I, I would recognize you. Yeah, I, I, I agree with, with Lisa. If, if, if for whatever reason it's extended, it doesn't hurt us because we're, we're operating within a more conservative, more rigid oh, timeline. Can you the button? We are, um, we are live streaming this meeting so the public has um, better access as well. So make sure when you speak to press the button. I thought I could do it without a microphone. But uh, I, I agree with Lisa. I think uh, it's better for us to adopt a schedule that's more conservative. If, for whatever reason, more time is allowed, we're still, uh, it, it, then we have more time. But if we follow this schedule, we know that uh, it's the most rigid. If we complete in this, we're, we're in good shape. So I, I support the proposed schedule. I'm sorry. I. I wanted to acknowledge a question that Mr. Saxon had asked uh, a couple weeks ago as well when we were kind of in the throes of when the, sh the clock began and uh, seeking legal counsel. He had asked if we had been given census data, um, but at that time, you know, I was expecting it to arrive in a gold shiny envelope, you know, for all of us to, to receive, but the statute is, um, it is upon its publication um, and it's really essentially I've, I've since learned that it doesn't necessarily come to us. It's there for us to access um, on the census website. And it's, uh, once we finish this discussion, Mr. Chair, if you'd allow, uh, we do have some state tools and um, as well as uh, uh, kind of an information hub that I'd like to go over as well. But I wanted to address Mr. Saxton's question from a couple weeks ago. Does anybody else have any questions? I guess I have a real brief, couple brief ones. This, this letter is actually from your township associations. Nobody, this is, I know, I think Warner's, is this from Kent County's Council or is this from? This is from the Michigan Association of County Clerks. Okay. Sought, an, sought this legal. Okay, legal so what, opinion. Not, not necessarily not this the county, body. it's because I know Warner does some stuff for the county too. So yep. this is a completely yep. separate individual and that's the, the, the clerk's yep. opinion, if you will. Yep. Okay. And do you know other counties? I mean, what are, are all the other counties adopting this, or is it you know kind of a mixed bag? I think it's a I think it's a, a mixed bag. Um, but I do know. I, I mean, Rob, you if if I might um, turn that question over to you because you were present at uh, at the meeting where this was specifically discussed. If that's all right. Correct. Uh, Rob McCumber, Chief Deputy Clerk. Uh, I, as, at the last meeting of the Michigan Association of County Clerks, this was a topic that was discussed and spe specifically the, the legal opinion. And I think it was about 50-50 uh, uh, as far as counties that were uh, recognizing the August 12th date as the start date and uh, 
the concern being the original dates that were given by the state, the, if, if you start on September 30th, you miss the deadline for the commission to draw the maps and then the map has to be uh, brought forth by a member of the public uh, if, if you were to wait. And uh, so the, the, the state has since backtracked a little bit since the uh, clerk's association came forth with this memo and has kind of backtracked their um, hard deadlines. So it was about 50, 50% of the county saying we're gonna start now and, and, and shoot for the October date rather than wait to start on September 30th. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I just, sure. in the meeting I was just uh, in <coughs> earlier uh, this morning was with the Michigan Association of County Treasurers. There's 83 counties and it seemed like everybody's doing it 83 different ways, but it, it's about 50-50. People have already started this, or counties uh, through the Treasurer's Association have already started it, and there's some that are gonna stick to, um, you know, the, the September 30th, but I agree with uh, Mr. Verhulen on, we should be a little bit more prudent and stick to the more strict schedule, and if some reason somebody says that we can go longer, then, then that's all right. I guess that's my gut reaction. The a motion to say set October 12th. I mean, I guess we do need something yeah. like that. Mr. Mr. Chair, I was thinking the same thing. I, I would make the motion then that this uh, apportionment commission uh, adopt the 60 day deadline of October 12th uh, to, uh, to adopt a county apportionment map. Support for Mr. Rehulin. So, any further discussion on this, Mr. Saxon? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you know, I appreciate the the research um, that was done beforehand when it comes to uh, what the appropriate time limit is. I've tried to do my own, and I'm with you. Or it's kind of unsure. Um, I don't necessarily think, though, that we need to adopt this as a deadline. We have a schedule. We can adopt the schedule that we see fit. Um, and if that schedule is before the October 12th deadline, then we already meet the criteria for, for meeting that deadline. We don't need to tie our hands when, let's say in a week or two from now, we have more clarity that says we have a lot more time. Then I think um, we can just simply modify the schedule if we need it to, if there's some impasse or whether we need more time. So I don't necessarily feel that it's necessary to adopt this deadline, um, but we can set it as something that we aspire to with our schedule and then modify that in the future. Okay, any further discussion? I think I, we still have a motion, so we gotta deal with that motion. I don't know if that's a friendly amendment or I think we gotta probably deal with the motion first and see how that goes. Yeah, I'm not providing any amendment, yeah, just a, a comment. My opinion on the Sure, motion. I appreciate that. I'm trying to, not really familiar with Robert's rules, so I, mean, I, I didn't do this, but I'm not, you know. That's all right, you got, you got, you're flanked <laughs> here. with you. Um, any, other, any other discussion? Just, just a question. Uh, oh, uh, Mike, is your mic on? I'm sorry. Assuming the motion passes, there, there's nothing that would prohibit us from doing a, a motion down the road to extend it, correct? Is that, that's my understanding. Yes. This doesn't lock us in. If, if, if circumstances change at a meeting, we can simply say we're, we're going to take what was the 60-day October 8th final meeting and extend it into November or what have you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I certainly appreciate uh, the comments by both uh, Mr. Saxton and Mr. Verhulen, um, especially as it relates to potentially tying our hands. Just, I, I simply think on this, I don't want to abdicate our role in this process. Um, and so I, while I, I understand and I, I uh, really do appreciate it, I'm not sure I'm ready to withdraw the motion at this time. Any further discussion? Yes, we'll go to a vote then. All, do we have to go individually or just all? All in favor of setting October 12th, 2021 as our deadline uh, for coming up with a, a plan, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Okay. Here the ayes have it. So we'll set October 12th. And I think the next order of business in terms of that October 12th is then the meetings within that schedule going from you know, now until <laughs> October 12th. What are we looking at in terms of meeting schedule? Um, I'll open that up to the floor with thoughts, ideas. Well, what do you want? To, what are we looking at? I like I, as I said um, before. I 
working backward from that uh, October 12th, I did take the liberty of trying to allow commission members who are um, interested in sub, uh, submitting maps to this body for, uh, for consideration um, to provide them as much time as possible while still giving us so, you know, some time to hear from the public um, to maybe make, make potential changes um, if, if there are amendments required. Um, this is something that I put together. Uh, it's certainly for your discussion and I would just leave that at that, especially in terms of what times might work best for everybody uh, on this commission. Looking at my notes, so I'll recognize you. I just uh, I want to be clear on these these sessions or the, this this organizational meeting and then these other proposed dates. We are not drawing maps at at these dates. Maps are being presented to us, so a lot of that work is being done outside this this commission. Is that correct? That's kind of how traditionally it's been. I took the I'll throw this out there. I took the benefit of talking to Bill Forsyth, who was a prosecutor before me, who went through this last time, and he said that's essentially what had happened before: is that it was submitted outside. Um, it wasn't necessarily people sitting in here and. You know, back then they didn't have online, on I think 10 years ago, it was, you know, hand drawing maps and stuff like that. It was kind of adopted by the, the, the outside and kind of presented as here's what we're looking at. So that was my understanding. Ms. Lyons? Yes, Mr. Chair, that was kind of my understanding as well. It was essentially um, multiple commissioners, uh, multiple uh, apportionment commission members uh, worked to... Um, draw maps for consideration by by the commission and then submitted those maps uh, with a presentation discussion of what you know what that commissioner drew and why and how and how it complies with with um, you know the requirements by law and um, then that was the discussion before the board Jackson No, this is, a, this is definitely a discussion to pro, okay. yep, exactly. Let me put my mic on. Um, thank you for putting this together, and as much as uh, my vote on the, on the, the last motion, um, I do aspire to get this done um, as soon as possible, uh, just to make sure, and so we don't drag this out. Um, so I appreciate if we want to set October 12th as kind of the, the general deadline. Um, a couple of issues I have with the proposed meeting schedule. Um, it appears there's a, a large gap between September 8th and October 4th. I know initial map creation um, can take a while, but I'm just wondering whether or not, I, I, I don't want to short change, for example, um, the ability to, let's say we submit maps on October 4th, uh, giving the public only two days to kind of look at them and analyze them, provide their feedback, and then suddenly in two days come up with amendments because um, as much as I've seen what, what happens in, in the previous commissions, I would like to take public comment into consideration and take it seriously. So I, I would propose that, yes, we can stay with that October 12th deadline. And then the only other thing would be October 8th is a Friday. Is that risking some kind of technical glitches or whatnot in order to get that um, submitted in the proper form? Does that give us enough time before October 12th to say we've followed the law and everything is done and we've submitted and we're ready to go? So, you know, for example, I would be open to having, you know, 915, even next week have submissions or, or even two weeks, followed by a, a public comment a week later, followed by um, revisions a week later, and then maybe having a final vote on adoption. So, and this is just, we can talk about this, but if we do Wednesdays, you can have 915, uh, a Wednesday 915 for submissions, then the next Wednesday have public comment, then the next Wednesday we do a revisions, and then the, the, the next Wednesday, which is 10 6, is adoption, which gives us a week to iron out any um, glitches or, or, or snafus in the process. Sorry, I lost a bit. Ten, maybe two weeks. Ten, uh, I, I lost a bit. Nine, 20. I think I, you can go over that again. So. Sure, I'm sorry. So today is 9 8. Yep. Uh, a week later is 9 15. Um, which we could have submissions and then presentations. Um, a week later, we can have, which is 9.22. It's a Wednesday. That could be public comment. Uh, and then 9.29, uh, 
um, we can provide our revisions and amendments. That can be the deadline. And then um, I would also argue maybe that the actual adoption vote, after we take a look at the revisions, we don't have to make a decision right now. Um, by having those amendments placed here and then say, okay, let's vote, gives us some time to also think about it. And then on 10-6 is when we can actually vote to adopt. So that would separate out a revisions meeting on 9-29 um, from the adoption on 10-6. Any comments on that? Mr. McGregor? So uh, just to be clear, how, how many public hearings uh, are you proposing? Are you proposing more than one public hearing? Uh, if you mean a, a official designated meeting just for public comment, one. But I believe that public comment is available at the end of all of our meetings, yes. correct? Yep. So yeah, so one, one official one. Um, 29th. On the 22nd. So submissions next week. So yeah, submissions on the 15th, public comment on the 22nd. Yeah, and I just got a, a remind a note from Ms. Howell here, our, our council. Just we got this. These are all open meeting acts. So yes. anytime three of us, you know, it's three, right? Yeah. Three of us meet in terms of that is an open meeting. So we have to be mindful of that. If you know, post post meetings here. But so yeah, all meetings are public meetings, and we just have one devoted to for public comment. My only question would, or my only concern with that is, is one week enough time for members here to? submit a map is two weeks enough time maybe I I'm I don't know I haven't really thought that far ahead so I think it's good um, discussion to have if members are comfortable with that mr. Buhlin. yeah I, I think one week is is inadequate um, uh, I, I I think uh, you want to prepare maps and you want to revise them and you want to think about them before you submit them so I think it is too aggressive to say they, they must be submitted by the 15th. What about the 22nd? Well, I think a lot of the time is going to be in, in developing those maps. So I'd rather err on the side of giving people you know, maybe the 20, 29th, which would shorten the proposed meeting schedule, that is, give us more time, but still give adequate time to prepare and revise and, and tweak maps that are being prepared. So I, I would be okay with the, with the 29th. I, I also agree that I think uh, that submitting within one week is too aggressive. I, I, I think uh, we, we need to be very diligent on this and I would agree with uh, Mr. Verhulen, that the 29th would be acceptable. Mr. Jackson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, I'm not married to the one week. That my, my, my bigger concern was making sure we had adequate time to process those submissions so that the public hearing, so people, the public would have time to come up with their own comments during a public hearing meeting, and then afterwards making sure that we had adequate time to take their comments into consideration amending uh, our maps and then um, adopting them. So yeah, I'm certainly not married to, to the one week. Um, if we did 929, does that then provide us adequate time for public comments and then adequate time to process that, that, those comments for um, amendments if we wish? That gives us, if we, if we go with 10-6 adoption, um, then that gives us a week to have public comments, um, make amendments, and, and vote. I don't know if that's if that's enough time because I agree with with Mr. Verhulen that we want to spend as much time as possible with the with the initial maps, right? Creating the maps. But then if we have a public comment and we only have two days to do amendments, I don't think that that gives us enough time to take public comment into consideration. So what if we? Because I I'm a little concerned about um, adopting a map and then take. I mean, when I I envision when this body adopts a map, that's the map um, versus making amendments after that. So I'm wondering if, what if we, you know, I like, I like where we're going with bumping this up a little bit to, to map submissions and presentations the 29th. Um, and then bumping, could we bump the public hearing up October 6th, or from October, October 6th as proposed to October 4th, an additional two days. Um, that would give 
uh, that would give the public um, a chance to have their hearing. It would give uh, any commission member who submits a map a chance to kind of receive that feedback and maybe whether or not we do it, do the adopt and, and make those changes and present, present the changes based on public feedback um, for us the, when we adopt. I, I, I'm okay moving some of this up, um, but, but if we want to give the, give us enough time to respond to that feedback, do we just move up the public hearing um, and then keep the October 8th deadline or the October 8th proposal for um, the adoption? Because that then does, what do you think? You, you mean amend the, the submission of amendments on October 8th followed by the adoption on October 8th? Yeah. Or do you want, are you looking to break them up? I mean, I think my preference would be to break them up to give the process, I mean, to, to be able to submit them here and then, and then suddenly have to vote. Um, I would prefer some time. I mean, my biggest concern, honestly, would be the public comment. I mean, are people open to 922 public comment and then revisions on 929 instead? That's my biggest concern is basically having enough time for public comment. I know it does extend public comment a couple days after the 29th um, and then give us some time, gives us four days between public comment and amendment deadline. So like I said, I, I'm more comfortable with giving us two weeks to submit on 922. Maybe one week is too much uh, or too little, but 922 map submissions would be my preference. Um, and then give an entire week for p the public to digest, make their comments on the 29th, and then what's that Wednesday. Then 10-6. Um, sorry, I got these dates all over the place. <laughs> Well, and like I said, we, we, we can set these numbers. I mean, what, what are people's feelings towards that? If, if the majority is not, doesn't want to do it in 922, then we have to. Can I recognize myself? Yeah. <laughs> you don't even have to do that. Oh, really? Just... I can, why? Cool. <laughs> I, I guess uh, what I, I guess part of this too is uh, I guess we're, are we assuming the public hearing is going to be in the evening? Assuming that's going to be more people are going to show up on those versus during the day. Is that, I guess, our take? I'll throw that open for discussion, I guess. I left the times open. Yeah, my preference would definitely be in the evening for more participation. Yeah, and that's, that's what I was thinking too. I mean, so, so with an evening meeting, I mean, I, I, I agree, I tend to agree in terms of having more time for public comment. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering, we're kind of on this Wednesday, if we did, or if we looked at, okay, for the submission, it, that would be during the day. Can we do it on like the 24th? It's a Friday. And then give a week to the first, you know, that we're looking at first for public, well, now for you on a public comment on a Friday. So when would the public comment be? The 24th? Yeah, no. Yeah. I don't want to, I'm, you know, I'm just. Okay, the 27th. 27th for submission. And then, uh, Thinking out loud, mm -hmm. because I, I I am mindful. I think I think there is something to be said about the public comment in terms of taking that into account and giving plenty of time. You know, the two days that we have here is a, is a little bit brief. So I, I would like to, you know, maybe cut down the the submission to a couple weeks, and then have public comment for that another week there, and then maybe meetings that last week. Would it be helpful to so? Would it be helpful to have two public comment dates is, I mean, we could, I'm just throwing this out there. I don't know if it's a good idea or a bad idea or anywhere in between, but I guess there's nothing to say that we couldn't, you know, have submissions the 29th. And then, I mean, there are people who are geared up and, and excited about this process. Um, maybe we could have one public hearing during the day on the 30th and then have another evening one on the sixth. That would give us some more. That would give the public. I, I don't. I don't know. I'm open.
question, I guess, looking at the past, how long, how long are the map presentations? I mean, is this just a, is it, you know, is it an hour long with it, or is it, I mean, we can all look at a map to have, you know, when you submit it, we'll all have an idea. How long are the actual? Based on the minutes um, from the last, from the last go around, when I say presentations, it was essentially the commission members who submitted a map presented their map as to what they've done and that kind of thing. I, I don't know off the top of my head how long that took, um, but I do know if I re am recalling correctly, uh, obviously the public hearing date uh, was the most extensive um, time-wise. Time sure. But I don't recall the meetings were too terribly long. Mr. I, I guess I like I like the 29th for the submission, the public hearing in the evening on the 6th, um, or even I think the 6th is. Uh, I guess I. What? How about Tuesday the the 5th? What about the 4th? Well, that's Monday. The only the only uh, concern I would have about that is that it it you know folks have the weekend to study them and then comment. So, but if we make it Tuesday. If we submit the maps on the 29th, which is the Friday, mm -hmm. uh, they'd have the weekend and all day Monday and Tuesday, and then have the public hearing on Tuesday evening. 29th is a Wednesday. Yes. Oh, oh, okay. So then I guess I would be okay with the Monday. Um, so if we did the 29th and Monday is what date? Monday is the 4th. And then the public, okay, the public hearing on the 4th. That gives us, um, we could even add an October 6th for amendment deadline and then map adoption. Well, yeah, if we, if we want to, I think Mr. Saxon talked about, well, it's not real comfortable with the deadline and map adoption the same day. So you could plug in, you could separate those two. Um, on, the, on, on the 6th, which would be two days after the public hearing. So we'd have the public input. And then October eighth, uh, map adoption. And but that October eighth adoption wouldn't preclude someone who submits a map to present an amendment at that time as well for this body based on feedback. So you could have, I think what I'm hearing is October fourth in the evening, a public the public hearing. Um, there will also be public comment time. Um, on the 29th, um, public comment time on October 6th, where amendments are presented by any any commissioner who uh, submits a map for consideration, um, and then October 8th is a goal. Yep, the Friday, the goal for ad adoption, Rob. But but also if there is based on any comment on the 6th or just more time that anybody might need. A sec second opportunity, a second to, opportunity uh, to propose to an amendment. Amendments. Yeah, I, I kind of like that. It gives us uh, time to get the maps prepared. Uh, we'd have public input on the 4th, so there'd be time to con consider that. We'd meet again on the 6th to consider any proposed amendments, and then a final opportunity for amendment would be on the 8th, and we would adopt a map on the 8th. And I would, I'd probably flesh it out and say the meetings other than the public hearing, I kind of like 10 a.m. if that works with the, uh, if the, if the room is available and so forth. I'd, I'd make that motion so we could at least get it on the table and uh, consider it, Mr. Chairman. Can we clean it up? Yeah. Let's, let's clean it up. So. so yeah, yeah, yeah. Specific I'm, dates, so. Yep. All right. I, dates and times I have, um, September 29th for map submissions and presentations at 10 o'clock a.m. I have October 4th in the evening, a public hearing. That's a Monday. Uh, do we want to do six, seven? Should we do seven, six? six Just 30, to... six. Either way, if it's going to go, it, so if, if someone's working and can't get here, it's... Presumably seven would work. Yeah, I'd say seven. Well, seven. I mean, if you do six, somebody who can't make it till seven, if that's the most lengthy part of meetings that we have, they'll be able to show up at seven. 
So I think six yeah. will give us enough time so we're not here till like midnight if this thing yeah, goes three, four right. hours. I'm, I'm kind of with you. I agree with that. Is right. six, six okay? Six p.m. Okay. So I have, let's, let me give, go back. I've got September 29th, 10 a.m., map submissions and presentations. October 4th, 6 p.m., public hearing. Um, just so you know, the public hearing last time was at 4 p.m. Um, so I think we're doing a good job of moving that forward, and, and I believe they may have gotten out about seven or eight. So I think, I think we're in a good ballpark to give people that kind of time. Um, and then October 6th, 10 a.m., uh, amendment, um, a meeting for amendment presentations. October 8th, 10 a.m., amendment deadline and map adoption. Yes. So we have a motion, Mr. Rehuen, and then uh, Mr. McGregor seconds. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion on this? I just really appreciate, I really appreciate, it, it was a little uncomfortable for me to put dates out. I didn't want to, I didn't want to leave the impression that I was, you know, trying to put the cart before the horse, but I, I felt it was important to have kind of a springboard, and I really appreciate this discussion because I think the public um, input is critical. I guess I do have one question going to Mr. Saxon's point. Is that, how do we submit this? Is that going to give us enough time to submit to the final if yes. that it is? So I, based on statute, and Linda might be able to correct me if I'm wrong, um, once the map is adopted, we record it in my office, which is convenient because I'll, I'll be there and, <laughs> you know, I know where I work. Um, and then, uh, so we record it with our office, and then we submit it to the Secretary of State's office. Um, if within, if after 30 days there is no um, citizen who brings forward an appeal to the courts, that becomes the official adopted map. Any further discussion? I guess I'll call for a vote then. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries. We're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Other business is next on the agenda. I mean, do we talk about how the, you know, do we need to talk about how the map should be submitted? Is it, you know, is it? computer electronically do you want to roll in a you know, a big whiteboard and have it drawn out and is there anything we need to do along those lines I guess I would leave that up to the individual submitting the map to determine um, you know to determine their mode of presentation um, I but I don't yeah oh um, actually this is a good time for the other business but uh, about the what's going on with the secretary of the state tools and stuff but yeah, I, I just, um, are there any minimal standards? I mean, if I came in, if I picked up a road commission uh, uh, county map and I just took a red marker and just, that would be adequate. We don't have to describe the precincts. Um, uh, I mean, I think just depending on if you want, I mean, it's a, it's, you've got to sell it to the board yep. too, yep. whoever, whoever's doing it. And I mean, the guidelines, I guess the standards would be that they adhere to the state law, which is, 46.404 we have certain guidelines and I th I do believe um, section 2 of the Voting Rights Act um, may also applies to Kent County's redistricting as well uh, that's in dealing with minority populations and I can distribute that um, if if necessary but as it relates to you know if you it, if, if you want to submit a map Pete and you adhere to all this and it's just on a napkin good luck selling it to us but you know I I don't but I open to so you have a point? Um, when when the notices go out for the meetings especially for the map submission meeting I would encourage uh, the clerk to put on the address or the website so that it's clear if someone can't make it in person and they want to submit it they at least have instructions on the notice of the meeting yes as to how to submit it okay that's, you know, we did put the address um, once we once we received one that this was live stream. We did put that address, so we'll continue to do that. And then you're suggesting also instructions for how to get on, or for how to submit a map. 
Right, how to submit it so that if somebody sees the posted agenda, can't make the meeting but want to submit something, they at least have that basic information to send it through your office or, or some, some actual spot okay. identified to drop an envelope, whatever it is that they're, they're going to I guess I wasn't under the impression that the public would be submitting a map unless we... They I, could. Uh, and that's um, what okay. I'm saying is they could. It's allowed unless under the we statute. Missed our so we should make sure that people understand that... I thought it's allowed in the statute once we miss our 60-day deadline. But it, it's... And maybe it's silent that they, it doesn't preclude them from? Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah, just uh, again, I don't, I don't think we do. We do we want to suggest if they're going to present a hard copy map that they bring multiple copies so when they're discussing it, we have a copy. And I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to yeah. discourage people from submitting something. But if you have someone standing up there holding up a piece of paper, a napkin, as it were, um, it's hard to analyze it. And I, I don't want to raise the burden of submitting a map, but I also think it would be. Uh, treated, uh, it'd be easier for us to evaluate it if it's if there are copies, so that either electronically or uh, we have a copy in front of us. But I, I I don't feel strongly. I just if I were advising someone, I'd say, well, make sure that you have copies so that the commission, the the members of the commission, know what you're talking about when you're when you're pointing at a at a piece of paper or a drawing or what have you. But uh, but uh, 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 yeah, I maybe we just leave it. And if someone like comes in and we can't understand them, it's not going to be considered as as much as it would if I have a piece of paper and I when they're talking about a proposed district I can see it uh, so just a comment Jackson um, <clears throat> I'm just wondering whether or not uh, to avoid somebody submitting something on a napkin I mean is there standardized mapping software that that we could or should all be using so that we can know that you know because I think I read ten years ago there was there was even uh, discussion about somebody having the wrong precincts because they didn't, weren't using, they were using stale data. And I just wonder if there's a mechanism or mapping software that we can all use to make sure, okay, all the precincts are where they're supposed to be, this has the right data, et cetera. Um, that way we're not accidentally voting on a, a map that doesn't meet basic criteria of like, you know, precinct, precincts matching up. That was the, lines. Why, yeah. why don't you talk about yep, the, the that tools be out my there, next, so that, that ties yep. into it. We can kind of, that yeah. was going to be my next um, topic for discussion on other business is um, there is a mapping tool that's provided by the state. However, that's not to say that that is a requirement to be used. I know, um, I know some counties, uh, not counties, some um, individuals who submit maps use third-party um, tools as well. Uh, and... Um, but I, I would like for uh, Rob, if you could just kind of go over the state mapping tool for, I, I want to make sure that everybody knows it's available for um, the members of this commission if they would like to use it. Uh, yeah, the Bureau of Elections has put out what they're calling the CCD uh, County Commission District Reapportionment Tool. It went live last week. Um, it, uh, they've had some training sessions and there's a, a webinar video I can send around as well as uh, uh, a user agreement for anyone who would like to uh, take a, advantage of using the state tool. Uh, originally it was said that, you know, even if you didn't use the tool to draw the maps, you would have to use the tool to get the, the census data. However, they've since published that data on the census website, so it's not required to use the tool, tool to find the data. However, it is in the tool if you choose to go that route and uh, uh, using the, the tool to draw the maps. I didn't think that was necessarily for all of Michigan citizens to use. Is it's that it's up to the, so uh, Clerk Lyons is the um, administrator for the county. Uh, she signed the memo of, of understanding to uh, have access for Kent County to use that. And it's up to the commission to determine who is granted access. There's there's levels of access. There's administrator, editor, and viewer. Uh, it's up to the commission how you want to decide who has access to use that. Yeah, I envisioned making it available to any member of the commission interested in drawing maps, knowing that there's third party, um, third party tools out there. I it hadn't crossed my mind to make that available to citizens. Um, I don't know what that would entail. 
to be quite I guess that, honest. That was just my question. What does that mean? Is it just yeah. online where you know you, Joe Citizen can just access on his computer and draw whatever he wants, or is it somehow get into your your security system or something like that? that I, do you right. Have any and anybody who you grant access to, there is an agreement that they have to sign, obviously, that they use it appropriately. So, uh, Mr. Jackson. Um, so uh, a question about that mapping software. Is that, so if we're granted access, um, I assume it's just like any general tool where you can save a map, you might be able to export what it looks like, the, the statistics, because there is mapping software out there like days redistricting and things that enable you to do that. Is, is, is it possible to have some kind of a, a tutorial or, or run through with this? Yeah, and what what you've stated is my understanding that is all correct. Um, and there is a the state has had a webinar. They've recorded it. It's on YouTube. I can we can send that out to the to the commission as well. Would it make sense to proactively just grant the all the commission members access to the tool so that on your time, if you're interested, correct. you can um, go in and explore that as an option? Are are you guys okay? Is that something you would be interested in? Yes. I can make that happen. <laughs> and so I assume that you'll send out an email after this meeting to let us know how to get access, et cetera. Yes. Okay. I guess with that being said, I guess I, I, I mean, I guess going if there is security issues, but I wouldn't have a problem with if a member of the public, just that happens, if they want to submit and we get, you know, name, address, phone number, email, you know, some sort of ID to grant them access too. To leave that option open, if we put it on, I to me, if you know, then we we avoid the writing on napkins. And if somebody really wants to take the time and it doesn't Seriously? have a security issue, you know, if there's something that's going to access county computers and you're worried about hackers, I, but if this is just something on the state website uh, that they can access, and then as long as we have identify, you know, identifying information, I don't see what the issue would be with provided to any member of the public who wants to take the time and do that. Do you think that's something that, um, Linda, you might know, is that something we should review with IT before um, before just going carte blanche with it, or do you think? Um, yes, okay. we should, and also the agreement that you've signed with the state to make sure that, I've not seen that agreement, so if that agreement assigns any liability for misuse of the tool to you or to the county, that's okay. going to impact how wide you you allow the yeah. access. Okay, so I've got some homework to do. Yeah, and I mean, that. if that's yeah. something like that, obviously I'm not trying to create liability for the county or anything. That's you know, but yeah, I, I just thought if it's you know yep. just a general tool that anybody you will know, give them access to it, and then it makes it easier for us in the all long run to really judge a, a judge these proposals as equals, assuming everybody's going to use these tools versus some person who comes in could have the most brilliant idea, but it's on a napkin and we can't tell. And then a, a follow-up to that, um, I assume we all have our own accounts. If a member of the public or one of us created a map, would we all have access all. to all maps? So, for example, if I created a map in That's there, a really good would question. it suddenly become available to everybody? That's a good question because you want some type of, you know, privacy or security at that point, right? Well, or, I mean, it's or open to discussion. Or the to share it if you'd like. Right. The, that would be the other thing, too, to say... By the way, here's my map, and I'm, you know, I assume all of us are going to bring in paper copies of everything we submitted, but at least if it's there, we know it's legit. Um, I think that's something we'd have to learn in the tutorial and questions to ask. It's not something I'm, I'm prepared to answer, but it's a good question. Sure, because you ate something, you know, you got a draft, and all of a sudden it gets out. That Wait, right. hold on, that wasn't, we were just working right. on it, you know. It was, you know, so I, I think that's a good question. Okay. Um, we started this somewhere. <laughs> now we started this in terms of um, other business. Other business. We talked about how to submit the, the maps. How to submit the maps. We we kind of we're not looking at a general. We don't have a general minimum guideline. We'll allow everyone. Just the statute. Yep. Yeah. You'll follow up on some of these questions. Yep. So, is there any other business? I guess that we need to discuss at this point in time. I, I just have a few questions for sure. for council. Um, so, am I right in understanding that in the current 19 district apportionment, we'd, we'd have what is considered a VRA protected district. Honestly, I need to go back and double check that to, before I uh, give you a, a solid yes or no because I wasn't involved in, in the Voting Rights Act and in, in those districts 10 years ago. 
Let me confirm it because I don't want to give you wrong information. Okay, because that, I mean, that, that's very important because we can't, we can't even draw districts unless we know, um, you know, what our guidelines are, if one exists, what our guidelines are for preserving this district. Uh, and, then, and then on top of that, um, if you could also uh, get an answer for us as well, if it is possible or we are under an obligation to create uh, another majority minority district within the county based upon the Voting Rights Act criteria, um, we would like to know what the guidelines for that are um, and, and what, if we have any obligations. Because I, I've been playing around with the numbers and I, and I see um, where the VRA could apply in multiple ways. So getting answers on that as soon as possible would be great. Uh, and then the only other question I had too is I know um, according to, where is it, this, according to the statute <clears throat> uh, 46404, um, they talk about what, um, what things we need to take into consideration when drawing these maps. And um, my question would be about <clears throat> E and F, uh, where it says that township villages and cities shall be divided only if necessary to meet the population standard. So, um, you know, my understanding is that we must uh, limit those, those um, divisions as much as possible. Uh, but if you had, for example, um, one, one municipality that's divided in half, it goes with one district, one goes with one district and one goes to the other. Uh, I was wondering, is that considered one, um, I don't wanna say violation, but uh, does that go against the guideline once or twice? Well, first of all, if you look at the very top of that section, these guidelines are considered in this order. So there are several guidelines above this that get more weight. Yep. Um, when we get down to if there's a division of a township or a village, um, I think we would, there's no real guidance on that that I'm aware of as to whether it counts once or twice, but it's a single township, a single village that you're splitting. So I would argue that it makes sense to count it as one split. But I will double check that and see if, the, if any courts have actually looked at that issue. Oh, that's all I have. Anything else? No, appreciate that. Yeah, very good questions. Uh, anything else? Any other business we need to think about right now, talk about? Mr. Hillen. Just, uh, just to comment or uh, uh, just to confirm that when Linda uh, does her thing, uh, she'll send an email to all of us. Yes. Is that okay? I guess I, I have one thing. Is it, can I, can we get? I'd like a copy. Take a look at the old what happened last time too. Is there something you can share with us? I don't know. Sure, I'm I can. Kind of a geek. So. Uh, well, it's I mean, it's public record, so it's the minutes and all that. Well, I can get you guys a copy of that. The minutes, the agendas, uh, the public hearing. Um, yeah. Anything else? Uh, I guess this is time for public comment. We have a few members of the public, not a ton, but does anybody wish to make a comment? <laughs> Typically we have a three minute time limit for any sort of public comment, so I guess, uh, and I guess there's a requirement that he state his name and- We ask. If you could state your name and let us know who you are. Morning, uh, is there a button I need to push or am I, uh, okay, great. My name's Micah Perkins and I'm with the Michigan Building Trades. Uh, the only question I had, I don't know if I can get an answer for this, but I had to allow public submission via the, uh, how will we know if that's an option for us? I can publish that in our social media. Um, I'm sh we'll, we'll do everything we can to uh, promote what we're doing here. I, it's really important, I think, that this body be transparent um, and inviting to the public. So. I'll make sure it'll be on the county's social media page and our social media page once that's um, once that's uh, something that we've worked through with our any obligations or concerns with our agreement that we have with the state and and IT considerations. And I feel like this whole meeting was a make work for Lisa uh, opportunity, <laughs> but I just I know, like you. <laughs> you haven't known me long. Uh, just the follow up to that is since the next meeting is the 29th. Do you, Approximately how long do you think it'll be before that information? As soon as possible. Post haste. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Any other public comment? Okay, seeing none, 
Move to adjourn. Take a motion. <laughs> we have a motion to adjourn for Ms. Lyons and support for Mr. McGregor. Any anybody in opposition to that? Okay, thank you. I guess we'll see you September 29th. All right. I am Kent County. I am Kent County. I am Kent County. We are 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 Kent County. Kent County. Ami, Kent County. Somos Kent County. Mas Ira, Kent County. We, we are Kent County. We are Kent County. We are Kent County. Oh yeah.